I'm a professional fundraiser, so I work in yeah. nonprofit communications and fundraising, and I shake a lot of hands. Yeah. And this is my dominant hand, and this was my dominant hand, so it made my work life very awkward Aww. for seven months. <laughs> oh, but I, in a way, I feel more. I feel really awkward when I have to prep someone to shake my hand, but I don't have a visible sign. I'll just say like, "Gentle shake, please," or something. But when you have a visible sign, for me, it's at least been like, okay, well, I know they're not going to crush my hand because yes. they see it, yes. hopefully. But I can see how it would kind of, re- maybe the fear would be that you're seen by them as kind of less capable, potentially, or like invalid or something like, oh, this person who has, who is wearing this brace, what's going on yeah. with her? Is that what you were thinking Yeah, well, about? it's just every interaction with a new donor, a new sponsor, yeah. a new volunteer became instantly about me and my illness uh, from the moment yeah. of meeting them. It, it was without fail, every single person. No one ever ignored the brace, mm-hmm. saw me, and it just engaged as if nothing had happened. And so right. it was, it became so tiresome when the first emotion that anyone ever yeah. experiences or, or shares with you is pity. Yeah. I hated it. Oh. So it was, hi, nice to meet you. Oh, what happened? Oh, it's nothing. It's chronic. It's usually my, was my um, yeah. trying to move past it. And Oh, like carpal tunnel? No, mm. not like carpal tunnel. It's rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, you're so young. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. See, and that was exhausting. Yeah, and you're trying, especially because this is this isn't just a social interaction. This is you're trying to do a job. Like your yes. job is to turn their mind onto focusing on the wonderful work you're doing, and getting them to donate rather than um, focusing on your on your health condition. So that's that's yeah. rough. Your original desire was to go into the Peace Corps and do really adventurous work. So how did you funnel that interest after you got your diagnosis into the current work that you do? Yeah, um, I, I think I made a lemonade out of lemons pretty yeah. well with, with that um, in that I um, ended up going to grad school for a master's in nonprofit management. Nice. So I could work on the administrative side in support of uh, the myriad causes I care about. Right. So international development, wildlife conservation, healthcare policy, yeah. anything. Um, I have now a uh, you know chameleon set of skills that I can I can move through any of those fields. That's awesome. Um, which I which I do enjoy a lot. And so I having an administrative job, I. Um, I have not had to miss any work related to my wow. my RA. <laughs> when you were looking for jobs, did you have any? Um, did your rheumatoid arthritis affect the kind of things you looked for in a job, or your interviews, or did you have any um, issues like s- disclosing, thinking about, do I disclose that I have RA or not? Yeah, How did that all go? I'm really glad you brought that up because it's a sort of passion, pet peeve of mine related to job descriptions, specifically regarding must be able to lift oh, yeah. X number of pounds yeah, in administrative jobs. I can tell you that that was on my current job description. And I can also tell you I've never had to lift X number of pounds. It's, yeah. ne- it's almost never core to administrative work. Like, yes, you might have to pick up a banker's box pu- full of files once a year and mm-hmm. there's always someone who can help you yeah. and so i i just i find those descriptions in uh or those particular bullet points and job descriptions to be incredibly off-putting mm-hmm. and especially when the poundage has been sort of inexplicably low or high uh relative to everything else you're reading in the job description it has put me off of applying to jobs in the past because i feel um like beholden to disclose I, I can't do that because of X, Y, Z, which um, I don't think is, is reasonable to expect me to have to disclose because right. I'd prefer not to until the point that I would need some sort of accommodation. And so I really just wish that that could be stricken from whatever form letters HR departments around the world are using <laughs> because I really hate it. Oh. <laughs> well, that totally makes sense. 
when you have had to talk about accommodations, um, do you have any tips to the audience about how to make, you know, approach that conversation or is it just kind of totally dependent on each person's unique situation? Yeah, I'm it's sure really it's sh- I'm sure it is. And my individual personality is tends towards diffusing awkward or tense conversations with humor. Yeah. Um, and that, and that works for me in my casual workplace, but it might not work for someone else. So right. if you're at a big company, I can imagine you might have to go to HR and make some mm-hmm. sort of formal request for special accommodations, whereas right. I can give one of my coworkers a shrug and be like, I'm not lifting that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. and, and, and it's totally fine um, because the vast majority of the world is oriented toward being helpful and accommodating. Right. So right. it's well, been really fine. Good. Yeah.